Hey, what is going on, guys? Root of the Null here, come back at you with a little bit of, you know, batch tutorials. Uh, I'm actually Root from Nullshell.com, if you guys haven't heard of me. And uh, Nullshell.com is my own domain, it's my own website, where I post a lot of uh, code, um, some videos, some animations, some projects that really I myself associate with, and uh, I kind of like to just put up online so other people can see. So uh, if you guys haven't, I definitely recommend you check that out. But uh, hey, that's enough self-advertisement. Let's get to actually what you came to see the video for. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to be looking at the Windows Batch. And uh, Batch is a scripting language, and I'll get to more on that later. But actually, let's get the window open first. Let's show you guys what you're going to be doing. Now, um, if you're on Windows 7 like I am, I'm going to be recording in Windows 7 throughout this whole series, what you can do is you can hit the Start button right down the bottom left of your screen and type in CMD. And uh, that'll get this little program right here called CMD. And you can bring that right down. At least I'm going to bring it right down so you guys can see it. And here it is. This is the the big black box that you're always going to be uh, working in. So uh, I'm going to show you some different ways to get this open, though. Um, there's the Windows key in R. When you hold down the Windows key, you can press the R button, and you can just type in CMD. And uh, see, if you look up at the top here, you can see uh, the administrator, because I'm running this as the administrator, C, Windows, System32, and then CMD.exe. Now, CMD is the command that we, ch we just typed in, and that's exactly what it's interpreting it as. It's going to run CMD, and that's what this Windows key in R is. It's, it's actually running that program. And uh, now this goes by a whole lot of different names. If you actually started up this uh, this search bar again, you typed in a command prompt, the first thing up on your list normally would be the command prompt. And that's exactly what it is that we're working with. Now this box here, this window, has a whole lot of different names. It's actually, uh, it can be called, uh, let's see, the command prompt, obviously, it can be called a shell, it can be called a console, or like a terminal. And uh, those are normally the, the nerves, the terms that I'll be, that I'll be using mo most of the time because I just think they're a little bit more dorky dorky anyway and they're they're kind of fun to say. <laughs> but yeah, this is what we're going to be working in. Now, you might have heard this sort of thing before cuz this this looks pretty familiar to you, right? It's just a big black box where you can just type in commands. And uh, these commands or things that you would normally be working with kind of trace back to uh, Microsoft Windows history. If you look back on uh, MSDOS, you, I'm sure you guys have probably heard of that, Microsoft Disk Operating System. Now, they use that, it's called DOS, or at least that's normally what us geeks call it, and they used that back when they had 16-bit processors or computer processors. And back then they had an interpreter, uh, which I'll... I'll talk more about interpreters very soon, but I want to introduce this theme to you because it's called command.com. Now, normally when you have a program that's written in batch or some of these DOS commands, they'll end in .com or .bat for batch and that sort of thing. So back when they had 16-bit processors, they were using command.com, which was a lot similar to cmd.exe or cmd, the thing that we're going to be working in a whole lot. So now that we've moved on to 32-bit processors, though, and um, and maybe even 64-bit processors, we're working with CMD.exe, which is which is a lot bigger and better. It has more commands, and the commands that it shares with Command.com have more functionality, and we can do more things with them. So that's kind of the difference between Command.com and CMD.exe. But you're going to hear those terms a whole lot. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that it's using an interpreter. And that's kind of what I was saying. Um, an interpreter is going to be that program that's actually going to interpret or read everything that you type in. All these commands or statements that you send to the interpreter or this program, in our case it's cmd.exe, it'll execute them one at a time. So when you have a program that we've created, that let's say we've wrote out a batch script, we're going to call it a script because it's a scripting language, what it's doing is it's sending that to cmd.exe and it's reading it line by line and executing everything that it needs to execute one after the other. Now, normally you'd hear that um, against a programming language. Now, a programming language is um, go going to be using a compiler, and a compiler will take all the source code and all the all the things that you've written, the the written code, and that's going to compile them into zeros and ones, actual like hardware program, so that your computer can understand it. So you don't actually get to see the source code in a compiled program, but in a batch script, it's only a script. It's going to be executed by a different program, not the program itself. 
Now that might be a little bit hard to wrap your mind around, but if you've if you've seen a lot of other scripting languages like Python, which is one that I definitely recommend, and I've actually I actually have a tutorial series on, you can definitely check that out. I'll, I'll recommend that a little bit more self advertisement. But yeah, that's what you're going to be working with, and Batch is a scripting language, and that's really the point that I want to get across to you guys in this video. Now, if we take a look at what I actually typed in here, J H S D A for whatever reason, you can see that J H J H S D A is not a recognized is not not recognized as an internal or external command, operatable program, or a batch file. Now, remember, internal and external commands are things that are built in to cmd.exe or command.com. I'll give you a little bit more of that term so you guys know what we're familiar with. Operatable program or a batch file. Now, that's exactly what this command prompt lets you do. It lets you run programs from within the shell or this console or this terminal. And uh, you would type in the name of the program as long as it's in the system path where you can you can see these things, and uh, it'll run them. And that's exactly what it's going to say here with the batch file. The batch, the batch file is a, sort of like a list of commands or statements that cmd.exe is going to interpret and then go ahead and run. So that's what we're going to be working with in this series. We're going to be we're going to be creating our own batch files and learn a whole lot more about the language. So uh, actually, before I get going, I guess I'll show you guys. Uh, if you actually look right back here at cmd.exe, remember how I said it started up in here, C, Windows, System32, and then cmd.exe. So let's go ahead and show you guys that. I'll get Explorer open, and I'll sort of move this a little bit so you guys can see what it is that we're looking at. Okay, and now we'll go to that same path that we just saw, C, Windows, and then System32. Now, in this location in your file system, there are a whole lot of uh, DLLs or like programming libraries. There are a whole lot of programs that you can actually run, and these are all things that you can call from inside the command prompt. By default, this is the system path, and we're going to get a whole lot more about that later in, other, in, in later videos, but when you see that cmd.exe, we can actually look for that right in here because that's where it is. If we type in cmd. Oh, if I actually hit the right key, sorry. cmd.exe. There it is right here. And you open that file location. You can see we're in C Windows System 32, and there it is right there, CMD. So this is the default path that's going to be looking for all the programs that we're going to start running inside this shell. And I'm going to keep calling it a shell because I want you guys to be a, a little bit more acquainted with that terminology. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this introduction video. I want you to understand that it really is an introduction video, so I'm sorry we didn't actually get to uh, we didn't get to write any code. But I want you guys to be able to know what it is that we're going to be talking about in this series, and you guys can be a little bit, a little, a little better off. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But all right. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I really hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.